Hey, Onlineers, this lab is called Centripetal Force. You should be able to get the handout and also the Excel document from the website. Here's the equipment. You get uh, these washers. I think you get 20 in your little kit and two paper clips. One of them is to actually mark off how long you want the radius to be. And the other is to hold all the washers on the end. And over here is the washer. You just kind of tie it on the end from the center of the washer to where it's going to come out of there would be the radius. I recommend a half a meter. Some of the handouts might say uh, different distances like a whole meter, but a half a meter seems really good. So let me show you how to rig this up. Alright, so here's what we're doing. We're going from the center of the bobber and then we're going to try to get it to exactly a half a meter. Get as close as you can. Come on over here with this camera and look right over here and I'm tying one paper clip on there so that when it's spinning around in a circle, that paper clip is used to make sure our radius stays constant. Very important to get good data, make that radius constant. All right, now watch what we do. You might need a partner for this, but put four washers on the end, and that weight is actually the thing that's preventing, don't hit yourself in the head, that weight is actually the thing pulling inward. Hopefully before you set this up, you actually did what I suggested to do in the lab, and that is, just have the string attached. Forget the paper clips, forget there. Just hold it with your hand and feel how it feels when you spin fast. Feel how it feels when your radius changes so that you get a feel for this centripetal force. Okay? So, see those four washers? Those four washers are now the thing pulling down. So, you have to get this thing to spin so that that paper clip stays without touching right at the bottom of the rim. Then, these washer weights paperclip plus washers will be the centripetal force that's creating the tension that's not letting that bob go around in a straight line actually making it go around in a circle instead okay so this is what you do you take data now if you don't have anybody that you can hang with you gotta get your own timer <laughs> you gotta get your own timer and hold it in your hand and count 30 revolutions of this thing get 30 Okay? Get that thing spinning at a rate where it's not touching, but the radius staying constant, and time 30 revolutions. Alright? When you get the 30 revolutions, if you know R, you got a real good estimate of what the circumference is. Circumference divided by the time of one revolution is speed. You can figure out how fast this thing was going around. Okay? We're out to prove that equation M V squared over R equals the force. This is the force. So the weight of the washers is the force, and now I just taught you how to find velocity, circumference, over the period, the time it takes to go around once. So do it 30 times and divide by 30 and you got the period. You should be able to figure out then the speed, and I'll show you in a minute why you also want to do speed squared. All right, you started with four washers. Just keep adding four washers every time. I think you got 20, which will give you five data points. So you start with four washers, and then you go to eight washers, you do the whole thing over again and you should notice as you increase the weight pulling down you have to increase the speed in order for this thing not to if you're going too slow it falls it starts falling down if you go too fast you hit that paper clip is pinned against the, the top so you've got to find that speed just right so that the weight of the paper clips is completely being canceled out by the inertia pull of that thing wanting to go in a straight line Matter of fact, hopefully you did that on your own to impress your friends. You let go of the string and let the thing go in a straight line so you really do know. They go off at tangents. They don't go out. Out is fake. That's a centrifugal force that doesn't really exist. The only real force is the force pulling in. You knew that. All right, come on over to the scale for a second. The mass of the stopper is the M of the MV squared over R. Now that's 13.045 grams, about 13 grams for the stop. Remember to change all this stuff into kilograms. The washers, uh, paper clip, all that stuff should be in kilograms. All right, I got myself 10 washers, and you probably don't have an electronic scale at home. If you do, shame on you, you're probably a drug dealer, but that's beside the point. <laughs> this scale is 10 washers, and we got, what do you got? Here, look at there. It says 58.71 for 10 washers. So that's 58.71 grams for 10 washers. Move it over one and you got 5.871 um, grams per washer. 
Let's see if that's right. 5.89 for that one. So I want to just average those guys. 5.87. Yeah. So take that number. What was that number again? Were you paying attention? Cameraman, were you paying attention? Here we go. 58.71. So 5.871 grams per washer. Change that to kilograms. Move it over 3. Multiply by 9.8. You got yourself the force. Add the paper clips weight in there. Paper clip weight? What'd you say? You want to know the paper clip's weight? What's the paper clip weight? All right, take paper clip weight, take the paper clip, and uh, let's find out what the paper clip weight is. I'll just stick that right on there. One gram. So just keep adding a gram to all those washers. Okay? So you do, bring up here for a second, you do uh, four and then eight, go all the way up to 20, you got five data points. And you should be able to get a speed for each of those five weights. Okay? Then we'll just answer the questions in the lab. You're going to need two graphs. One for force versus velocity, and the other one force versus velocity squared. All right? And make note of that. What will the slope of the one that's going to be straight give you? What will the slope of that line give you if this equation is valid? Give that a thought. Answer these questions. Write me a nice paragraph that tells me you understood what was going on. And uh, that's it. Just make sure both graphs are on the lab. Answer the questions and that's it. There's an Excel document that will help you. So fill that round in and uh, you'll be fine.